keeping the heartbeat of the city healthy with health tips and benefits from real doctors in the area, this is Health Help. There are a lot of misconceptions about tooth decay, what causes and what causes tooth loss. So therefore, I would like to just give a brief explanation of what happens in the oral cavity when you eat a sugary diet. In the mouth, there are organisms called Streptococcus mutans. Streptococcus mutans is an organism who is in the family of the strep germs that also cause throat, uh, sore throats. So therefore, this family of bacteria are quite harmful. In the oral cavity, these Streptococcus mutans absorb the sugars in your diet. Now think about a sugary diet that, that people drink and eat, which includes soft drinks, candy, and a variety of other foods that we all enjoy. Now, in order to reduce the amount of Streptococcus mutans, or strep mutans, it's desirable to clean your teeth properly. Brushing and flossing are the two of the best ways and the simplest and the least expensive ways to remove the bacteria from the sides of the teeth where they accumulate. Now, the bacteria also produces, there's other types of bacteria that produces gum disease. That is another problem that is related to tooth loss. Many people don't realize that under the edge of their gum next to the teeth, the bacteria grow, produce toxins that destroy the ability of the tooth to stay in the mouth properly. You've heard that grandma had loose teeth, she had to have them taken out, and this was due to, it's been called pyrrhea, it's been called gum disease, but it's, we dentists call this periodontal disease. So it's important, the simple object of brushing your teeth properly can help reduce your tooth loss. Simply to say that brushing and flossing are valuable ways and simple ways of removing the bacteria. As I described earlier, in order to remove the bacteria, you must apply the toothbrush properly. Therefore, there is a technique of placing the toothbrush just at the gum line slightly toward the gum line and the tooth, we call this a 45 degree angle. And in order to clean the edge of the tooth properly, it's a slight rotating action, a back and forth action, a random action to make sure the brush is going around the edge of the tooth. Now, in order to do this, you keep in mind that there are basically 10 places that you need to concentrate on. So we've got the cheek side of the tooth, of the row of teeth and the molars, the tongue side, and the brush is turned at this angle so that you can sweep the necks of the teeth. And then you, then you can turn the brush toward the necks of the teeth on the back in this direction. Brushing it this manner in your mouth is a little bit difficult to remove the bacteria that accumulates on the back of the tooth. Many people will develop a bridge of tartar or calculus, which is a accumulation of bacteria that's become calcified from the saliva in your, in your mouth. So you want to brush the tip using the tip of the brush, then, and of course the front, you brush all the way around to the front. And then on the other side the same way, on the tongue side, and then on the upper, you're using the same basic direction Toward, slightly toward the gum line, using a random action, and then same thing on the other side, remembering to get on the tongue side of the uppers, and then the backs of the front, upper front teeth. Now, I suggest, and it's recommended, that you brush twice a day for two minutes. A lot of people don't have a clock available, they don't think about it, so I'm going to suggest that you brush at least, ten, count to 10, 
in each segment, this way you will have successfully spent enough time in each area so that your brushing technique can allow you to remove the bacteria that accumulates at the neck of the tooth. Because what happens is your failure to do this results in gum line tooth decay where you have allowed the bacteria, the Streptococcus mutans, to accumulate. Now, we, there are five sides on a tooth. There's the chewing surface, there's the cheek side, there's the tongue side. Now, lo and behold, there's in between. So, knowing that, we have cleaned five. Five surfaces need to be cleaned. We've done three, so we have two more to go. Dental floss is a very handy way of doing this. Now, flossing, it can be a little bit of a chore. A lot of us don't like to do it, but if we want to keep the problems from developing between our teeth, then we have to clean there. Now, dental floss is kind of neat stuff. There's a different varieties of it. There's the waxed, unwaxed, there's the Teflon, there's all kinds. And my suggestion is for people who like to, um, to experiment a little bit, a couple of varieties might be appropriate. So I recommend <clears throat> in, in flossing that we take the, the dental floss, wrap it on your middle finger so you can get a good grip on it and extend your fingers to where they just touch. Therefore, you can sli gently slide the floss between the teeth and a random action. You don't want to saw at it. You want to use a random action and the floss comes in and goes out in a V direction. So if I'm flossing my teeth, then I place the floss and I use a random action and move the floss and so it polishes each side of each tooth. Therefore, you have cleaned the side of the tooth where it touches its neighbor and this is where most of the fillings occur that we have to uh, place in your mouth. However, it's important to do this at least once a day because within 24 hours, what people don't realize, you go get your teeth clean, the dentist or the hygienist does a great job, you think, I'm good for another six months. Wrong. Within 24 hours, those germs start growing on your teeth again. And if they're not removed, that acid starts eating into the sides of your teeth and you get to go to your dentist and have fillings replaced or new cavities filled. So by flossing between each tooth, so that you effectively remove the bacteria, you don't saw at it, you use a random action and the floss goes in and it goes in at kind of a V shape and it goes back in a V shape and this area is then properly cleaned. Now, when you go to your dentist, be sure and have a nice conversation with him. And if you need to talk to your hygienist about the proper ways to floss, I'm sure she would be more than happy to go back over this process of flossing and how to properly brush so that your mouth can main be maintained in a healthy state for the rest of your life. Keep in mind that a clean tooth is very much more, has much more uh, and greater opportunity of staying in your mouth for the rest of your life with minimal amount of need for uh, extensive dental care. We all get cavities, we all have problems. Sometimes we don't clean as well as we should. So this is why you need to see your dentist every six months so they can evaluate your progress to make sure that you're doing the job that you need to be do uh, doing and make sure that you don't develop any dental problems.